All right, Ivy, the recording has started, so please go ahead. Hi, uh, my name's Ivy. I'm a first year GIS student at Columbus State University working towards the certificate. My project um, is about highlighting areas with uh, somewhat limited accessibilities uh, or accessibility to um, a COVID-19 vaccination site. Um, this project came about because at first I was more interested in mapping out um, a more broad uh, kind of who's, um, who's able to get the vaccine or not. But an article from um, the Union of Concerned Scientists blog um, brought to my attention by Dr. Brasher um, kind of highlighted um, the limited accessibilities uh, to the COVID-19 vaccination site for minorities. And after checking into um, some of the CDC data on um, who kind of is more at risk for COVID-19, um, uh, which said that um, it's mostly minority populations who are kind of unproportionately more at risk for, um, for contracting COVID-19 and from dying from COVID-19. Um, I was more interested in finding uh, areas that with, um, a majority where the majority of the population were minorities um, and finding uh, who could get to a COVID-19 vaccination site within 15 minutes. So, um, so on uh, the screen, you can see my, um, my map um, that shows highlighted areas where um, the population are mostly minorities. So this includes um, this includes Black Americans, uh, Hispanics, or, or Latinos, and um, possibly uh, American Indians. And <clears throat> so, um, what this is showing is the the population where mostly where they're mostly minorities, and also where their incomes are uh, lower than the national median. So these are low income areas with mostly minorities. Um, that are outside of the 15, um, that are outside of a 15 minute drive away from um, the COVID-19 uh, vaccination sites. So what we're seeing here is, um, is kind of, um, we're noticing that the pattern here where the affected areas are mostly in rural Georgia, more specifically in the Black Belt, and we also have um, an inset map of Atlanta to show kind of the finer details. And we're seeing that it's mostly downtown Atlanta that's affected. There are some areas of North Atlanta that's affected, but my suspicion is that these are areas where, um, where the populations are largely Latino or Hispanic um, of low income. And <clears throat> um, I think this is just a really good map to kind of showcase that um, in these areas, um, we're seeing kind of a disproportionate, um, a disproportionately affected population that are unable to access um, the COVID-19 vaccination sites. Now, in terms of um, making the map, um, I had to pull data from um, from the Georgia Public Health Department website, they provided a full list of, um, of vaccination sites that included uh, the, ad the address and the name of the site. And I had to, um, I had to take those data and um, put it, uh, turn it into an Excel spreadsheet. And I, transferred the, or I dropped the Excel spreadsheet into ArcGIS Online, which created um, uh, point features on the map that, um, that placed each vaccination site. And after that, I created, um, I, create, I did a 15 minute drive time analysis to find what areas um, were 
uh, were outside of the 15 minute drive. I also had um, another layer that, um, that included census data um, showcasing uh, minority populations and uh, median uh, or median income of each uh, census tract. And what I did with that layer was I filtered out um, where income was uh, greater than the, uh, the median and filtered out where um, minority populations were, uh, were less than 50%. So what was left on my map were areas of um, lower income, majority minority populations. And I had to merge all of those features into a single feature and find, um, find where these areas did not intersect with, um, with our, our uh, bubbles from the drive time analysis. And so the result of, um, of kind of, uh, how do I say this? Um, of finding where our our target areas are not within 15 minutes is the result of um, is what created the map. Thank you for listening. Yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing about that, Ivy. I um, I thought that the way that you went about doing this analysis was really interesting and, and it's something I'm thinking about kind of suggesting for my students to do going forward is you can do a lot of your analysis on these types of projects in ArcGIS Online, but then because of the limited capability to sort of put your map into a nice cartographically, aesthetically pleasing format, then you can just really easily uh, bring that into ArcGIS Pro and you know, you can put your north arrow in there, create a legend, put a, a nice inset map in there, give it a title, all those kinds of things, which uh, I thought you did a really nice job doing. What um, what was maybe a, a road bump or an obstacle that you faced while you were doing this uh, this processing of this data? So the biggest one was actually at the very beginning of the project when I had to take the data from the Georgia Public Health Department website because the data that they offered was actually not um, any kind of spreadsheet. It was just a, a non-interactive table on their website. And the way that I turned it into an Excel spreadsheet was copying and pasting over, I think, 300 entries. And that was that took quite a few hours um and and after that was um was an even more annoying error where i tried to drop the spreadsheet into arcgis online and there was something about how um how the the format of the spreadsheet delineated the columns with an excess amount of commas and I had to find that out by by opening the Excel spreadsheet in Notepad, and so there was a lot of fiddling around with um, with changing the format of the spreadsheet without changing the the how the data was worded in the spreadsheet, and um, and that took quite a lot of googling to figure out how to how to get over, and then after that. Um, there was the issue of trying to merge the polygons because um, because I thought that maybe merging the polygons would require some kind of tool in ArcGIS Pro. And there was a lot of Googling with that as well. And um, and then at some point I kind of just said, well, we can we can just try the the merge the merge um, feature in the in the um, edits, which finally worked. And then of course, um, as everything with, uh, with, with software is, um, there was a lot of uh, being unsure of whether or not it would run and, um, and waiting around to see if it'll work, 
realizing it's not going to work, having to try to do do it again, but in a different way. And yeah, so those were my major obstacles um, doing this project. But overall, I think that the entire experience was very valuable. I learned um, I at some point throughout the semester, I had learned how to do each of these things, but never really got to put them together in this kind of context. Nice. Very good. Yeah, you did a great job on your project, Ivy. I love seeing the, the final product that you come up with here. Thank and you. it sounds like you also have been successfully initiated into the GIS world <laughs> as you face all different yes. kinds of trial and error <laughs> issues, software yeah. issues, data issues, right? <laughs> Especially right. the work that you did to get all of the vaccination sites into an Excel spreadsheet by manually copying and pasting. Um, pretty labor intensive. So really nice work. Happy to see <laughs> how you. your hard work really paid off. Um, nice job. Thank you. One last question I'll ask you before I give the other students a chance to ask a question is if, uh, if you were given the opportunity to approach the Georgia Department of Public Health and Governor Brian Kemp with your data, your research, your map here to um, tell them about accessibility to the vaccine, uh, and, and maybe advise them on how to improve accessibility to the vaccine. What what might you say? So I I would definitely say ask them to please consider rural minority Georgia because um, because we're not talking about little patches here and there that are outside of this of the fifteen minute drive. We we this is like a significant pattern within the state. And <clears throat> the way that we can kind of address this is, I understand that this is, um, these are rural areas. These are not big cities where you can just kind of set up a vaccination site at a doctor's office that's suddenly now accessible to, to everyone who lives there. We should probably consider setting up more mobile vaccination sites and maybe offering um, or offering like, little pop-up um, pop up vaccination sites, uh, or just even send out more vaccines to these areas um, where they can, they, they, they'll be able to access it more. But um, I know that there's an article out there, I can't remember um, where I saw it or what it was called, but I know that um, Stacey Abrams is working on um, uh, providing um, more accessibility to the vaccine for rural minority Georgia, which is awesome. Great. Thank you for sharing that, Ivy. I, I think that uh, you got a pretty compelling case for Governor Kemp to consider here with uh, doing some mobile vaccine distribution, especially in some of these poor rural majority minority areas where um, that accessibility is going to be difficult. So again, really nice job. Good work. Thank you. Uh, Clarice, There's a, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna. I was just gonna add um, one more thing, which was that um, out of curiosity, I wanted to see if if you can't make it in a 15 minute drive to a vaccination site, can you make to, can you make it to one in 30? And the good news is. When I did the 30 minute drive time analysis, all of Georgia can get to a COVID vaccination site. Good. That's good to know. Thank you for adding that caveat so, in there. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So not not all hope is lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but again, you know, if you're if you live in a, a rural area and you're poor, you might also have less uh, accessibility to a car and right. to any kind of transportation to get 15 or 30 minutes away. So the farther away it gets, the more difficult for folks, right. even if it is just 30 minutes or just 15 right. minutes, right? Yeah. So we, yeah. yeah. So if you remember, we, we did do the, 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 um, take a look at percentages of households without a car and in rural Georgia, it goes up to 30% of households do not have a vehicle. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So we, yeah. 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 Whereas in more urban areas, it was mostly around, you know, like less than 5% for most places. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Compelling case. Thank you. Um, Clarice, Chase, questions for Ivy about her project? 
I don't have a question. I just want to say I really like how you set up your map. Like the aesthetics is very, like, I don't know. I just really like. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Any questions that I had were answered by the presentation. So I was. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. you so much. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Nice work. Well, then I'm going to stop the recording here.